I've got here a lovely little boning knife and if you don't have a boning knife um, I, I'm, may I suggest that you invest in a good one this is a Sabatier uh, excellent quality uh, French made high carbon steel knife boning knife and it's really fantastic for this job uh, I'm going to get to work boning this and um, the bone and some of the sinew and stuff is going to go in that stock pot so um, uh, right now I'm going to mount my camera and go through the boning process alright I apologise to any butchers who are watching me and seeing it and doing it all wrong but I'm not a butcher I'm just a guy that's boning a piece of lamb okay so I, what I do is I go run the knife against against the bone like that and if you can see that and go as close to the bone as you can I'm not too worried with this because I want some I don't mind a bit of meat going into the actual um, actual uh, stock pot in this case um, but you see this is what you're after it's this marrow here that's so good and that goes into your stock um, you don't want to waste any of that, that is absolutely amazing, that is pure, pure flavour. So um, that will cook out of the bones but I like to get as much out as I can before cooking it out. And you've also got some at this end as well so don't waste that. Uh, you can actually get marrow out with them. Uh, I don't know if any of you use lobster claw forks but that's also very good for getting marrow out. But that should do. That was a ton of flavour just in those little bits I cut off right there. And let's get that out of the way. And then again, just going in, running the knife along the blade, uh, along the, the knife blade, along the bone to get to the, the meat. Now it's going in the hot pot, so the meat's going to be cubed. So don't worry too much about the how it appears. And the butchers are laughing their heads off at me now because I'm making such a pig's ear of this. There you go, it's the lazy cook, the guy who can make a pig's ear out of lamb. There we go. Just run that along the bone and a nice chunk of meat there which I'm going to cut off. Now that's my bone and I'm going to go down the joint and cut the sinew and because the bones open at both ends I, do, I don't really need to waste time smashing all that because it's already smashed and um, the, the marrow should come out of it so that is going in my stock pot um, I'll probably add um, a lamb stock cube to that and then top it up with water to just cover it in the stock pot so that's what my stock pot looks like at the moment and um, I'll just get to now I'll switch knives and just cut this meat into handy cubes all right make sure you're working with a sharp knife always work with a sharp knife when you're working with meat because it's too easy for it to slip and cut yourself. I'll get back to you when all this is chopped up and in cubes. Alright that's the meat cut up and don't be too shy of cutting of, of, of using the fat because fat is flavour in this and there's not a lot of fat in, in, uh, in lamb leg anyway. You can also use a shoulder of lamb which is a very tasty and succulent meat um, but uh, shoulder of lamb is a lot more fatty so uh, you probably want to trim some of the worst fat away from the shoulder of lamb um, but always keep just a little in, in the uh, in, in the dish because it is flavour right this dish calls for a quite a lot of onion and to that end I'm going to use that as you see is a fairly large onion I'm going to use one and a half onions of that size um, it's a fairly simple dish once you get past the stock and uh, you can always get the butcher to cut your meat up for you that's not really an issue or buy it already cut 
Um, but make sure you use lamb or mutton because this is not authentic, it's not authentic to use any other meat. Um, the other thing that we use with the Lancashire pot is potato. So it's, it's really quite simple. It's salt, pepper, uh, lamb, onion and potato and it is really, really that simple. And the only other thing that goes into it is water and stock. Um, so uh, let's crack on with this. I'm going to use my iron pot to uh, fry up the meat but first of all I'm going to prepare the vegetables. Right, um, I like to cut the onion into slices like that and you'll see why in the finished dish. It does look rather good. Right, on we go. All right, the uh, veggies are now cut up and the potatoes are cut nice and thin almost so you can see yourself through yeah, through them um, and that's how they've got to be. Um, if they're going to stand around for any length of time just soak them in a bit of water with some lemon juice or vinegar and then they won't brown off um, but I don't intend for this to be hanging around too long so that should be good. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get my big uh, cast iron pot on the stove and uh, get that up to heat because I want to sear the meat before I add the stock and do all the rest. So uh, at the moment I'm still waiting for the stock to, uh, to, to cook and that needs to cook for quite a while so I think actually I will transfer these into some, um, into some uh, water just to keep them from browning because they're starting to yellow slightly now as I look at them. Um, and we'll get back to you as soon as that's, uh, that's ready to go. All right, my um, oil is coming up to heat in my lovely, lovely cast iron pot. And I'm just gonna throw in the meat. The great thing about these cast iron pots is they really, really retain a lot of heat. Did you notice spoons ever sneaking in center stage again? So now I'll try to do this. Yeah. So we give that a coat. I, I, like I do with a lot of my meat, I brown it off. I want it really nice and browned off um, before um, before I start to introduce any other items to it. So we'll get a turn of colour on that and I'll get back to you in a minute. Alright the meat is starting to brown off really nice. I've turned my oven on now and my oven is up to 180 degrees Celsius, that's around 350 degrees Fahrenheit in the old money. Oops, losing a bit. It goes straight back in. And once the meat has started to take on the brown, now's the time to get in the onions. Onions add a wonderful, wonderful sweetness to this dish and uh, that, a real beautiful depth of umami flavour. And using a lot of onions like this and cooking them down, uh, really down low, is a technique used in a lot, a lot of cuisines. Um, in, in Indian cookery, the dopiaza method of cooking the, the twice, uh, where onions are added twice in, in the process, they're, you know, they're fried in and then um, fried onions are added in yet again later on in the cooking stage in some, uh, in some dishes and it, <laughs> it really is fantastic. Um, so let's get that going, let's let that fry up a little bit, let the onions start to relax a bit and then we can uh, carry on. Alright, the onions are starting to relax uh, a bit now and it's time to get that stock into there. So I'm going to strain in the stock 
Um, it's going to create a lot of steam and a lot of um, a lot of mess. So I'm I'm, I'm just going to strain it in off camera and then show you it when it's in. Okay, it was about two and a half uh, pints of stock. That's about 40 fluid ounces. Uh, sorry, 40 uh, 50 fluid ounces of stock uh, that went in there. And uh, as you see, it just covered the top of the meat. Now, we can actually turn the heat off from under that uh, because right now, and it's very important because of the, of the process you'll see next, that we get the flavor right, right here, right now. So I'm gonna have a taste of that. Right, the, the stock is uh, pretty perfect. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper. Uh, traditionally, again, in British cookery, we probably wouldn't have used black pepper. Um, so I can imagine a few Lancastrians cringing at seeing me put black pepper in that, but um, sue me, you know, because I like black pepper and that's what I've got. So there we go. So plenty of black pepper in there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is lay over the potatoes. I'm going to search for the thicker slices first and just lay them over the surface like this. Don't be shy, just get them on there. And if you run out of potatoes, slice some more up. Okay, you need plenty of potatoes on this. brother will be smiling at that because he loves his spuds. I'm sure he should have been born an Irishman because he loves his spuds. <sighs> and now once you've got a layer in you can start layering on top of those and you'll see on just on the surface there some of that meat fat is now floating up and coating those potatoes that are sitting on the top and that is one of the, <laughs> the most <laughs> wonderful things about this simple yet delicious wonderful hot pot and it's just that taters floating on top of it that give it a kind of pie look when it's finished um, but they also had a, had a wonderful textural element to it and we I'm using uh, the British are rather fond of their fluffy potatoes and I found that you know some nationalities are rather fan, more fond of their waxy potatoes so if you do if you're cooking this in uh, elsewhere in the world not Britain um, you want to be you want to be looking for the more floury type of potatoes like baking potatoes that kind of thing um, because that would be a bit more authentic. Um, uh, another good potato to use for this is the Willia potato which is rather good and the King Edwards they are very good as well because uh, they, they are really nice and uh, and, and fluffy uh, is the word for them and they cook down lovely and you get this nice sheen on top uh, when they're baked in the oven. Uh, as that bakes in the oven the liquid level will drop and uh, I'm now going to bake that uncovered at 180 degrees, 350 uh, Fahrenheit for uh, about an hour and a half to two hours and we'll see how it goes from there because that, my dear friends and gastronauts out there, is going to be wonderful uh, but I'm not going to tell you anymore, I'm going to show you. I have to wait one and a half to two hours. You guys are lucky because you're going to see it right now. Oh dear boys and girls, that has turned out gorgeous. And that is pretty much ready to serve. I'll just let it uh, stand for a couple of minutes because it's going to be a bit too hot and then I'll serve it up and show you. So there it is, all portioned up and ready to eat. You see the succulent lamb in there, 
uh, sweetness from the onions and how the potatoes bake on top. Absolutely delicious. Enjoy.